And you may be seated. When the mountains fall and the tempest roar, you are with me. When creation falls, still my soul will soar on your mercy. And I'll walk through the fire with my head lifted high, and my spirit revived in your story. And I'll look to the forever you reign and my soul will find a refuge in the shadow of your wings I will love you forever and forever I'll sing forever you reign and my soul will find a refuge in the shadow of your wings I will love you forever and forever I'll sing alone, and 
you will go before me you will never leave me and I am not alone and I am not alone you will go before me you will never leave me in the midst of deep sorrow I will see a light breaking through The dark of night will not overtake me I am pressing into you Lord, you fight my every battle I will not fear Cause I am not alone And I am not alone You will go before me And you will never leave me And I am not alone And I am not alone and you will go before me And you will never leave me your own. You amaze me, you redeem me, and you called me as your own. You amaze me, you redeem me, and you called me as your own. For we are not alone, and we are not alone, and you will go before us. And you will never leave us And we are not alone And we are not alone And you will go before us And you will never leave us Jesus tells us, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, so that whoever believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. It is with assurance and confidence in this promise from Jesus Christ, our Lord, of life beyond this earthly realm, that we gather this afternoon to grieve, to mourn, to remember, and to give thanks for the life of Lyle Herb, now gone from us. Lyle was a beloved husband to you, Sherry, a beloved father to you, Chris, who he deeply loved and who you loved right back. Lyle was also a brother, an uncle, and a friend to many, whether through his work, his sharing of his passions, or as part of his communities of faith. He was a member of this congregation where he contributed much, as well as part of Wilmot Center Church where he and Sherry were together, an important part of that community as well. And all of us gathered here this day are joined together in expressing our condolences and care to Lyle's family. The sudden and unexpected death of a loved one can be especially difficult. It means things can be left unsaid, hurts left unmended, an opportunity for something more seemingly snatched away. In such situations, it is normal to feel shock and just a profound sense of sadness at the loss of what could have been. And so today, even as we gather to very intentionally give thanks for Lyle's life, 
and to celebrate that because of the promise of Jesus, he is now made whole in the light of God's eternal love, it is still very normal for us who are left behind to be experiencing a great swath of emotions seemingly at war within our own hearts and our minds and our souls. And that is okay. We can feel whatever it is we feel, think whatever it is we are thinking, because we know that we are gathering for this service in the grace and love of God for each of us that is big enough to hold it all. And so we do gather today to both give thanks and celebrate, as well as entrust our loss and grief into the all-encompassing, compassionate arms of God. Let us pray. Loving and comforting God, we come today with our thankfulness for Lyle's life, our sadness over his death, and the hole that his passing has left in our hearts. You, O oh God, are big enough to hold this great mix of emotions that we ourselves are struggling to sort through. And so hold it all, O oh God of mercy and grace. We entrust it to you. Hold us in your arms of love. Draw near to us, we pray, in this time of worship. Be with us in our grief. Help us to remember and reflect, celebrate and give thanks. Grant us your holy and divine peace. Would you fill us with thankfulness and joy even as we mourn, knowing that Lyle is safe and made whole with you. For you, Jesus Christ, have conquered the grave. Amen. Our first song is from the Purple Hymnal, number 29, Come, Now is the Time to Worship. Number 29 in Voices Together, and as you are able, would you please rise to sing.
Our scripture reading this afternoon comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 7, verses 9 through 17. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they? And where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These people have come out of great hardship. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. This is the reason they are before God's throne. They worship God day and night in the temple, and the one seated on the throne will shelter them. Never again will they hunger or thirst. No sun or scorching heat will beat down on them because the lamb who is at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to the springs of living water and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our next song is number 436, How Great Thou Art, number 436 in Voices Together, and for this one we will remain seated as we sing.
Lyle's wife, Sherry, selected this poem for our service this afternoon. It was originally written by Sherry's grandmother 90 years ago. It was read at Sherry's mother's funeral. And today it reminds us that we are not alone nor without God as we grieve and give thanks for Lyle's life. It is entitled Trees and God. When you feel your faith in God slipping and you want to bring it back home, go out and stand under some kind of tree and gaze up into its dome. The maple tree on a morn in May, standing proudly in the green sod, just look up into its branches green and you'll feel the presence of God. For in May, there still are some spaces where the leaves are not fully grown and the glorious blue heaven are gleaming through. There, another great gift of God's shown. Go beneath the lovely apple tree with its blossoms so sweet and fair and the birds and bees are humming through and you can see God's goodness there. Then when the autumn has come again and you dread the winter cold, go out and talk to your maker beneath a tree of red or gold. Be it maple, oak, or silver birch, each are lovely in their place. The maple so red, the oak so bronze, and the birch like golden lace. Then Christmas comes with its evergreen and their, fa and their fragrance fills the air. And somehow they bring with them peace and goodwill. The spirit of giving is everywhere. So remember, if your faith is, sli is slipping, go out and commune with your soul under most any kind of tree, and that faith will be made whole. I now invite Chris, Lyle's son, to come and offer a tribute to his father. This song I sang a long time ago here, and I remember it being a song that my dad liked a lot. And it is a, a worship song, it's by Hillsong. Um, the words are up there, if you'd like to sing along, you can, if not, that's okay. Um, but the words have a lot of value and gravity to them, and um, here we go. <laughs> Grace, what have you done? You murdered for me on the cross Accused in absence of wrong My sin washed away in your blood So much to make sense of it all know that your love breaks my fall The scandal of grace You died in my place So my soul will live Oh, to be like you Give all I have just to know you Jesus, there's no one beside you Forever the hope in my heart Where is your sting? Your power is as dead as my sin. The cross has taught me to live. In your mercy, my heart now to sing. The day and its trouble shall come. I know 
that your strength is enough The scandal of grace You died in my place My soul will live Oh, to be like you Give all I have just to know you Jesus, there's no one besides you Forever It's all because of you, Jesus. It's all because of your love that my soul will sing. No, to be like you, give all I have just to know you. Jesus, there's no one beside you. Forever the hope in my heart. Where is your sting? Your power is as dead as my sin. The Lord be with you. This past week, the image of God as shepherd, or particularly as God as farmer, has certainly been on my mind. We encounter this image multiple times throughout the Bible, particularly in the infamous words of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want inviting me to lie down in green pastures, leading me beside still waters, restoring my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. On the days that we simply cannot make sense out of life, and especially the days when we simply cannot make sense out of death, the Lord is my shepherd. In the questions, the confusion, and the frustration of how little control we actually have in the grand scheme of things, the Lord is my shepherd. Just as in the joy, the love, the promises of new hope and eternal life, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is our shepherd. We have all that we need, inviting us to rest in green pastures, leading us beside still waters, restoring our souls. Even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil, for the Lord our God is with us, now and forevermore. And so again I say, the Lord is my shepherd. The farmers among us this morning or this afternoon certainly understand the depth of meaning of that line. Understanding the immense care, the sleepless nights, the intentionality, and the all-consuming nature that is the role of shepherd or farmer. It's not a clock-in, clock-out kind of a role. It's a giving of your entire self for the well-being of others kind of role. It's the loving, caring, mourning, fearing, protecting, sustaining, lifelong actions for the sake of another kind of role. I can think of few better images for God than that of shepherd. For God is always with us, at all times, in all places, whether we know it or not, God is there. God is taking care of us, walking with us, protecting us, guiding us, helping us, sustaining us, and inviting us into all that is goodness and grace. Even in times of hardship or loss, In times of confusion and anger and frustration, God is there. Within complicated relationships, 
and painful experiences, God is there, now and forevermore, tending to us like a shepherd, even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It is this God of never-ending love, of persistent presence and compassion that joins us this afternoon as we gather in worship and celebration, in shock and grief, and with a jumble of all forms of layered emotions as we say farewell to our friend, our husband, father, brother, and uncle, Lyle Herb. The Lord is our shepherd now and forevermore. I am honored this afternoon to hold the sacred reminder of God with us now and always, alongside the memories and stories of the larger Herb family, as we encounter Christ's spirit within our grief and celebration. Uncle Lyle was a lot of things. He was passionate wearing his emotions right out there. He was creative, musical, and loved working with his hands from a young age. (laughs) He was an extrovert, if I've ever met one. There was no such thing as a short conversation with Lyle. He was a thoughtful gift giver, whether it be the the top-of-the-line Christmas present, paying for someone's Tim Hortons order, or ensuring that everyone had a big old glass of milk. He was also a child at heart, loving his farm toys, motorized boats in the pond, and the latest new gadgets. Which, who could blame him? Being 10 years younger than Mark, and 13 and 14 years younger than Karen and Keith, Lyle was always the baby brother, even into his 60s. It's no wonder that he took to pestering and joking around with people, especially for those he cared with, cared for. However, one character trait that stands out about the, above the rest is his meticulousness. Lyle took pride in taking care of things well. If you needed the lawns mowed, Lyle was your guy. If you needed machinery looking washed, or if you needed machinery washed and looking like new, even years later, Lyle was on it. And don't think he made any exceptions for the inside of the manure tanker. He'd wash that until it sparkled as well. Washing down the parlor after chores seemed to be a relaxing activity for him, insisting that he was the only one who could wash it well enough. And he could. You'd never know nearly a hundred cows had walked in there moments earlier. Now, I will confess that there's a small chance I took advantage of his meticulousness from time to time, particularly when I needed my car washed. I may have discovered if I parked my car right in front of the barn windows, Lyle wouldn't be able to stand the sight of it. And he would have it washed before I was ready to leave again. Now, he certainly didn't do that silently, sternly calling me by my childhood nickname of Bubbles! but it was well worth it for the free car wash and a good chuckle. On a more serious note, several people have shared this week that Lyle was one of their favorite Sunday school teachers, as well as remembering fondly the music worship nights that he would host that he paired so precisely with a laser light show. And his dedication to the deliverance worship team where his meticulous side insisted on doing everything possible to ensure they sounded just right. His ear for music carried over into family life as well. Along with brothers Keith and Mark, they would randomly break out into harmonized singing. And this musical passion lives on in his son Chris, particularly when they would play music together and when they created a recording studio in their basement. Lyle was always so proud of Chris. Lyle was also a farmer repeating over and over how much he loved his farm. Learning about tractors from an early age by dismantling the toys of his brother Mark, which may or may not have led to, or have played a part in his pristine collection of farm toys. Lyle loved the farm and his cows. And he was the milker, particularly after the barn fire in 1990. 
Believing that the cows milked better when listening to worship music on the high-tech sound system he installed in the barn. Early mornings and late nights didn't seem to bother him. Grabbing a bite to eat when he could, enjoying cookies left in the barn office for the brothers by Sister Karen, or coming into the farmhouse for second breakfast. The past few years weren't easy on Lyle, especially with declining mobility, but he was so determined not to give up. Taking on management responsibilities as his older brothers aged, Lyle loved being a farmer, and so he persisted with that one-of-a-kind farmer stubbornness that somehow keeps farmers going through the impossible. When walking became a challenge, Lyle didn't let that stop him. With his trusty Kubota, he would brave any terrain in order to reach you for a long conversation, wherever you may be. But on December 4th, 2023, this all came to a sudden end. Given the 14-year age span between the siblings, never did they think their baby brother would die first. The farm itself feels that loss. The dog, Maggie, continues to be on alert for his return, chewing at his barn coat left behind in the office. Lyle was a farmer and knew well the seasons of life, and he certainly left his mark on this one. One of my last conversations with Lyle a few weeks ago was also one of the most profound conversations I've had with him. We stood in the feed alley talking about the fears and challenges of farm transitions. I was grateful for the vulnerability that he shared with me, particularly sharing his vision for farming. Naming that he saw this as his ministry, he felt called to feed the world especially now when the world felt so chaotic, we need to feed the world. I'm grateful for that sacred reminder of what it means to be a farmer, a caretaker of others, and what a beautiful insight to hold as we seek the comfort of our God, the Good Shepherd. The Lord is our shepherd, now and forevermore. And this imagery of God as shepherd is also found in Revelation 7 as well, particularly of the promises yet to come. After hardship and death come the end of the world itself, the promises and comfort of God remains. Verses 14 and 17 read, These are they who have come out of great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, the one who sits on the throne will shelter them. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not be down on them nor the scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Even with the span of several hundred years, we hear the same echoes in Psalm 23 as we do in Revelation 7 of the promises of God as shepherd, a farmer, a caretaker, reminding us of the significance of eternal love that flows and surrounds us in our time of need, that tends to our soul, offering us comfort and hope even in the face of loss and death. A God who is not far away but joins us beckoning us to holy ground. The Lord is my shepherd. On the days we simply can't make sense out of life, and especially the days that we simply can't make sense out of death, the Lord is my shepherd. In the questions, the confusion, and the frustration of how little control we actually have, the Lord is my shepherd. Just as in the joy, the love, the promises of new hope and eternal life, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is our shepherd. We have all that we need. Inviting us to rest in green pastures, leading us to peace beside still waters, restoring our souls. Even though we may walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we shall fear no evil. For the Lord our God 
is with us, now and forevermore. And so I say again, the Lord is my shepherd. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's sing together number 597, My Lighthouse, number 597. Stand with me if you're able. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures you won't walk out. Would you please join with me in prayer? Eternal and everlasting God, who brings us into this world, who walks with us all our, di- all our days, and to whom we return, 
beyond this earthly life. We thank you for the life of Lyle Herb, whom we have known and loved, and who is now gone from us. This day, even as we feel keenly our loss, we take comfort in your assurance that Lyle is now free of all earthly limitations and is made whole again in the light of your presence, rejoicing and celebrating in the company of those who have gone before. Receive him now into your tireless arms of mercy, O God, a sheep of your flock, a beloved child of your redeeming. Grant him your everlasting peace. Surround us and all who mourn with your unending mercy and compassion, for we know that you can turn the shadow of death into the brightness of a new day. And so we ask, comfort his family, his wife Sherry, their son Chris, and all who knew Lyle as brother, uncle, and friend. Enfold all who held Lyle in their hearts and who now feel keenly his absence in your all-encompassing love. Good God, walk with us through the coming days. When we feel alone, remind us that nothing can separate us from your love. And whenever that shadow of death does threaten to fill us with fear or anxiety, Calm our spirits, comfort our hearts, surround us with those we can confide in and take shelter with. And so, Lord Jesus Christ, we ask that you would grant us your love to heal the absence that we feel and your grace to leave behind any hurts or blame or regrets called to our minds, memories that bring smiles and laughter and joy. Fill us with the hope of a new day when sorrow and pain will be no more, a day when new joys and new possibilities will fill the emptiness and you will wipe away every tear. We pray these things together in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now, our final song one of committal and blessing, is number 70, Praise God from Whom All Blessings Flow. Number 70 in Voices Together. We will rise to sing as we are able, and then please remain standing for the benediction, the announcements, as well as, as Lyle's family departs. Please rise as you are able.
Well, as we depart from this place, a couple of quick announcements. The first is that immediately following the service, all are welcome to join Lyle's family for a brief service of committal across the road in the cemetery. As you depart from here, if you are going to join us, we invite you to find your warm clothes and then to gather with us at the back doors. We will make our way over together. There is somebody helping with traffic. If you get separated from the group, just wait until it's safe to cross. It is a busy road. After that, everyone is welcome back here in our fellowship hall for a meal where there will also be an open mic where memories can be shared about Lyle for his family. And now receive these words for you as a blessing as you depart from this place. May the God of all comfort fill you with peace so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit now be with you all. Amen. Amen.